Good evening. I am Nelda Schulte. I'm Gil Donkers Good. And I'm with NeldaSchulte.com, where we help property investors with affordable resources that help them with their landlording. And we're joined today by the two handsome rogues from 403 Handyman. We have Courtney Miller and Kevin, I don't know your last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, thank you, yes, <laughs> Kevin <yes>. Williams. <laughs> anyway, Gil and I used uh, 403 Handyman constantly when we ran a property management business because you could get them right away. They always got there very quickly. Whereas if you book a normal tradesperson, a normal, normal tradesperson, a plumber, electrician, plumber, whatever, you have to wait until they have time. So it could be weeks. Whereas 403 got in right away, got things done really well. The tenants always loved them. We love them too. That's why they're on our show. So Courtney and Kevin, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and uh, how you got into this? Go ahead, Kevin. You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I uh, basically we were um, a part of the uh, Shaw back Shaw buyout, and um, we were uh, we were communications guys for for many many years, and uh, you know uh, the opportunity came to to try something new, and uh, I. I was in the market for a new career, and I um, I came across this opportunity um, through Facebook actually, and <laughs> I, uh, I gave a call and I I checked it out, and um, I called Courtney and asked him if uh, this is something that he would be interested in, and um, Courtney and I worked together at a couple different places, plus we have uh, some pretty close relations, so. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, I decided to, uh, or he decided to partner up with me and, uh, it's been three years and we've been just learning the business and, uh, enjoying the journey. Oh, that's great. So yeah. tell us uh, briefly what kinds of uh, stuff you do. I mean, I know what you do, but let's tell the listeners what you do. Well, uh, 403 Handyman is actually a franchise, franchise and we help, um, homeowners and small business with um, small repairs. So we specialize in, there's nothing too small that we'll say no to, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've got, we've got electrician and stuff. So we can, we can do the big stuff too, but we specialize in the small stuff. Nothing too small we'll say ever say no to, as long as you're willing to pay us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, they came and fixed my sliding closet, my Ikea closet, and they fixed... Well, they fixed stuff with my flooring, my floorboards. This is just my house. Uh, all kinds of stuff. All yeah. kinds of things. Yeah. So I can't even. Yeah. Know how many times I've had you over to my house? <laughs> it's like you're part yeah. of it. Yeah. And, and we and would you for any properties we were managing as well. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. Small stuff is really good because it's hard to find people who can do small stuff. Mm -hmm. So that said, what are the top things that you get called for with rental properties? Um, a lot of, uh, we do a lot of drywall repair, a lot of, uh, uh all of a sudden my phone decides that it wants to be very busy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we do a lot of, uh, a lot of drywall, a lot of touch-ups, um, move in, move out, uh, repairs, uh, pre-list repairs. Uh, we were doing, um, a program called proper prep where we would, uh, do all the prepping before you uh, list your home. Uh, we just go through a, a list and um, just check out uh, all the maintenance issues that might prevent your home from selling. And uh, uh, we would just go through the list. Uh, if we couldn't handle it, then we would uh, make a note or find someone to do it for for you guys or re refer you to someone. And um, uh, that worked really well for, and we still do that with uh, certain realtors as well. So, uh, so what I'm what yeah. I'm kind of more interested in is what types of things should uh, rental property owners be looking for uh, when, like, what are the things that kind of go fritz on them that they aren't aware of that they don't know about that they should look out for? Um, well, um, carbon monoxide detectors and smoke detectors. Um, a lot of guys don't know that not just um, 
you gotta check the batteries in them, but they actually do expire too. So I think what is it about? I uh, can't remember it's, exactly. Is it 10, 10 it's years? Like 10 years, yeah. 10 yeah. years. So when they expire, you know, we, we change them. Um, look for that. Um, your furnace filter, uh, leaky toilets, um, leaky taps, you know. I, I know a lot of rental places where the, the homeowners actually, the renters will actually pay the utilities, but you, you still want to make sure that you're maintaining, you know, especially your toilet. If it's, if it's constantly running, it's, it's, it's going to affect the toilet, right? So if it's not working properly and holding that water and stuff like that, you know, leaky pipes, they yeah. can cause issues. Um, um, I can just, um, this year, what we, we did a lot of deck repairs, you know, rotten deck rep, um, boards, you know, those can be a hazards to tenants, you know, loose steps. Um, um, some of the things that when you own a property, I think a couple of years ago, they've changed it with the blinds. Uh, you can't have those corded ones anymore. Oh, they got to yeah, be all right. court. Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, because it's yes. a talking hazard for children. It's considered unsafe. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What about weather stripping? Is that something you get you get uh, fairly often with rental properties? Yeah, weather stripping on the for your um your front and back door, and even the one if you have a garage, um, mm -hmm. that big one for the garage door, because you know if you have good weather stripping, you're gonna keep a lot of the heat in in the winter, and you know it's gonna save 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 a lot of money for you that way. Yeah. um what else do we do uh we fix a lot of closet doors yeah you know sometimes they fall off the tracks or whatever we do do a lot of those too um yeah. sometimes I'm because some... i don't i don't know how many times those have been on my list with condos and how old yeah. older houses they always get off the tracks you can never get them to stay longer than a couple of days and then they're off again yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, what else is the hardware yeah i'm kind of thinking about seasonal things too like in the fall what should yeah. What should property owners be thinking about doing for maintenance? Well, if you if you have a sprinkler system, you want to get that blown out because um, yeah, you definitely don't want the, those will those cost a lot of money to fix. Um, you want to get those outside taps um, turned off, right? You know, yeah. make sure you know turn them off, get the water to drain, and turn them off from inside. So keep those off in the winter. Um, winter time, you just, you want to be ready too. we talk about weather stripping, make sure that, you know, all your weather strippings are in, you know, good working order. There's no holes or gap. We actually, last year, we did a lot of weather stripping where, you know, we were out there with blow dryers and stuff because we were trying to, we always try to stop that air from escaping. Right. And sometimes you yeah. have to shim that door. You got to adjust it. So the weather stripping just sit just right. You know, I think you did our door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah in fact i know you did you did the weather stripping for that one and weather stripping because it's scraping along the ground it does have a limited lifespan um it's not going to last forever because it wears out yeah so people need to be aware of that and know that that's part yeah, of your your door sweeps there if uh, we've changed a lot of door sweeps just uh for that reason because it is uh, dragging on the threshold there and it wears out and you, a lot of times you'll see the uh, the rubber, when it's at the end of life, you'll see the rubber just hanging off the yeah, door, I've the bottom seen. of the door. So uh, that's important to get uh, looked at. What about uh, yeah. dryer vents? Uh, do you- Oh yeah, definitely. You gotta keep uh, keep your dryer vents clean and, um, and uh, like make sure you remove the lint from the lint trap, because that's a fire hazard. Uh, so be doing that regularly, and uh, you can also it, it just also affects the efficiency of your uh, of your dryer. Your dryer is working a lot harder when that vent is clogged or that um, the lint trap is clogged up. So yeah. I just uh, I just had um, an experience with that myself. So yeah, <laughs> even yeah. as a you know a homeowner with a house full of uh, uh, young people that they uh, they they constantly doing laundry. They have to, they just don't um, look after the, the lint trap. And, you know. So are these, uh, are we talking teenagers who have started noticing members of the <laughs> trying to make themselves yeah. attractive to them? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly who we're talking about. <laughs> I always used yeah. to call them shower syndrome because I know when my brother started noticing girls because holy cow, was there ever a lot of showering and laundry and cologne happening? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, speaking we're of going showers, too, that right now. Yeah. 
yeah. speaking about showers, those bathroom fans, you know, um, mm-hmm. you definitely want to get out. If, if you can get that, that cover off, because a lot of times you look up, you see they're all clogged up, you know, it yeah, sucks a lot to so you. If you. What I used to do at my home, you know, like once a year, you know, springtime, I would take all my vent covers, everything off, stick them in the dishwasher, give them a good wash, stick them back on, you know, that, that totally helps too. Um, bathroom yeah. fans are very important, uh, especially rental properties. You see, when you don't have that fan on, that moisture gets everywhere and it's going to break things down in the bathroom. I mean, your baseboard, your wooden door starts to break down. So it's really important. Like for me, I always, um, I put um, these switches in. They're not, they're not that expensive at Home Depot. You can buy them and they have a timer. So usually, you know, you go with like even one that's like 30 minutes or an hour. It's good to have that because every time you use the bathroom and that, those pipes are on, you want to pull that moisture out, right? right. Yeah. 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 If you have texture, I haven't really thought about because uh, I mean I guess you can't expect everyone to do what you do in the bathroom or to know what you know. Yeah, yeah so right. If you just hook it up so that it automatically has to shut on and shut off, that then you don't have to worry about if they're using the fan. I think in the house that I built, I actually had one that was driven by humidity, so that if it got wet in the bath in the bathroom, yeah, they do have some of those. It comes on automatically. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Humidex. Yeah, that's a smart idea. Yeah, definitely. Because um, if you have like a textured ceiling and you notice that it's peeling, it's because there's moisture uh, over time it has been trapped in there and it, it starts breaking down everything. Like Courtney said, it starts breaking down the paint. It starts, uh, you could grow like mildew in there. Because mold, it's too yeah. moist, right? mold and mildew. So it's very important that bathroom fan to, uh, to, to get the moisture out of that bathroom. So now if we go up, up to the top floor, up to the roof, do you ever go up on roofs and check the shingles and all that other stuff? Is that something you ever tackle? Uh, no, we don't do roofs uh, just for insurance purposes. We, we have a, a contractor for that, um, that we usually uh, have to handle all our roofing, uh, roofing needs. And what about eaves troughs? That was that, suggest that. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, eaves troughs. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a big one. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, eaves troughs they they get clogged up. Uh, the uh, it, it starts overflowing. Um, yeah, it's good to get them cleaned out. We do we do clean eaves uh, eaves troughs out. Uh, I just did my neighbors and he, his eaves trough. Well, he's a new neighbor. It hasn't been cleaned in about probably the lifetime of the house, which is probably oh, about 15 years. Oh my God. And uh, I'm telling you, it was like, there was like a, a, a small garden in there. <laughs> you know, you know, speaking yeah. about East Trough, like a lot of people don't know. I mean, and that they believe that you have to have trees around. No, uh, your no. shingles, um, the, yeah. the stuff that comes they, off the shingle, they, the asphalt, it's a yeah. lot the asphalt and it goes into those trough, east trough and it just clogs them so you, even if you don't have any trees around it just that alone yeah. but if you have if you have trees and and that oh it's double you have to clean them even more often well yeah, yeah we actually when we first moved in here the eaves troughs were full and i think actually the weight of the water on the eaves trough was doing some damage to the eaves troughs just because there was yeah pushing. so yeah now, it could collapse them yeah yep yeah, so now what we have is we have a little one of our eaves troughs has a, a place where the water stands even after it's rained because that's the low spot in the eaves trough. So uh-huh, yeah. I mean, that's not ideal, but it's going to be difficult to fix. So we just yeah. live. In- but, you know, when I became a new homeowner, it didn't occur to me to clean out the eaves troughs because I didn't really know what they were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I rented properties, I didn't know anything about cleaning eaves troughs out. So I always maintain that if, if it's something you want done, either you as a landlord have to schedule it so that it gets done yeah. or that's you need, right i don't know if i'd be comfortable letting my tenants go up on the roof and I do that, that themselves that's, that's yeah, kind of a lot <laughs> uh you can just hire i've hired people to do eaves troughs for 80 or 100 dollars, and then it's done and they've got these neat little machines that just blow water and they just hold a stick up Gil, you should tell them the first time you clean the eaves troughs up in our house <laughs> <laughs> was, try and save a little money here it was it was like August and I climbed onto the roof and I really burned myself because those shingles. Yeah. Like yeah, my, yeah. Literally burned. 
Um, oh, I wow. Didn't, <laughs> I, I didn't last very long up there. And we didn't have a tall enough ladder because yeah. you know, I was trying to get up with the hose. And then another fun thing happened. We turned the water on. I think it was either we had just turned the water off and we turned it back on again, or it was, it was either spring or fall. But anyway, a pipe burst. Oh, yes. And the downstairs water is pouring out of the ceiling. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know, to do wow. a simple thing that, you know, you'd call someone in to do your eavesdrops and they can get it done in an hour, a couple hours. We tried to do it ourselves. It took us three weekends and we had to get somebody to fix our pipe and our ceiling. And our was and it was wow. funny because the, the, the pipe actually froze inside the house. Assuming it froze, it might have just failed. Like it was probably four feet inside the house where the where the break was. So oh, wow. yeah. that was an accident waiting to happen, which all happened on the weekend. One of the three weekends we decided to clean up these trucks. We did finally get them <laughs> after that. I said, you know what, Gil? Next year, let's just hire somebody. So we did, and it's just been smooth sailing from it's, there on. Again. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Like there's some some work I'll do, but something like that. The, the, the difficulty of just, I'm, I'm just not crazy about roofs anyway, so I'll, I'll gladly pay some. Yeah, um, yeah you got to be safe up there. Yeah, be safe. What about sub pumps, sump pumps? Um, do you, is that Yeah, you should, uh, you should get your sump pumps uh, serviced uh, every year, um, once a year. Uh, we don't get too many requests for that, but yeah, it's something that we, we can have a look at for sure. Yeah. yeah, when those fail, that's a real that's a real hazard. Uh, what about caulking? Yeah. Caulking is that something that comes up at all? Yeah, we we do yeah. a lot of caulking. Uh, go ahead, Courtney. Yeah, even even on on the east trough too, because well, it happens over time too. If if you ever go and it's raining and you see your east trough, the water is leaking out of them. So sometimes they do need caulking, especially at those corners where they meet together. So. Yeah. They need caulking to stop that water from pouring down on your head, right? Um, <laughs> another thing with east drops too, the 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 downspouts, the downspouts, they're they're super important. You want those water to be pulled away from your home, right? Right. You definitely yeah. don't want it to be like have them up, especially you want to have them down, you know, a couple of feet away from the house so that they can um, take the water away. Yeah. I always think it's funny where where eaves we're not eaves trusts, where downspouts are, are placed because I have a house in Fort Mac and it had two really long downspouts. One of them went right onto the driveway. So in the spring, it was constantly freezing and thawing. It was just a death trap. Like I thought, <laughs> just see broken neck every time I look at that. So I had somebody yeah. come in and reroute them. And then we had another one in the backyard and it went right into the window well. And I thought, why would you put one in the window well? <laughs> We're trying to keep water away. So I had it routed into the back garden. So, but it was just such a crazy, well, then we had a crazy one in our house. Too. Yeah. So what, what they did, I don't know who did this and it was nuts. Rather than put an end cap, our house is recessed slightly from, from the duplex beside us. So we're back yeah. about, um, we're back a couple of feet or forward a couple of feet actually. So whoever the rocket scientist was, uh, who put the eaves trough up, decided not to put a cap where, where our house connects, but actually to cut through our wall and ran the eaves trough through our wall. And wow. it rained. <laughs> and of course, they never cleaned the eaves trough. So it's flooded. So, I mean, we had black mold and it was, it was nasty. Oh, no. it was raining right in the house. <laughs> oh, crazy. That is, when, yeah. we bought the, when we bought the house, we had an inspected, but who would even think to look for that? No, I knew it. You probably got black mold growing behind your master bedroom wall because the eaves trough is going into your wall. Like not even something we would have thought to ask. I mean, who would? Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I guess uh, it might go with the age of the home as well. Like uh, older homes will have some quirky things that passed code way back when. Twenty years and, ago, uh, thirty years ago, yeah. Uh, thirty years ago. <laughs> this well, is a nice. Right, fifty years ago. <laughs> right. The, you know, well, that's way older than any of us. Yeah. Way, way. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> okay, and, I wanted uh, to bring up life expectancy of appliances because this was something that used to come up with us fairly often. Like the the property owners, especially people who were converting their house or their condo or their townhouse to a rental property, the a tenant would be in. Let's say they lived in their property for ten or fifteen years. They were converting it to a rental. 
the tenant moved in, the dishwasher didn't work. And they'd say, well, what did they do to it? Oh, well, it always worked when I was there. And I'd say, well, how old is your house? How old is your dishwasher? Uh, so it was something I needed to tell people was that there was a life expectancy to their appliances. And if your dishwasher is 10, 15, 20 years old, yeah. it's not gonna last forever, even if you replace the parts. Sometimes you can't get the parts. Uh, so yeah. maybe you could give us a little overview of uh, life expectancy of let's say, uh, you know, the major kitchen appliances like uh, stove. How long would you expect that to last? Well, well um, um, <laughs> okay. yeah. no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. I think I think a, a stove probably one of the ones that lasts the longest. I would say maybe you know, yeah, maybe 10, 10 to fifteen years. You know, you could get out of a good stove. Yeah, maybe, maybe twenty you, years sometimes. Yeah, me. yeah. Even twenty years, I would say you could get out of a stove. Like, so <laughs> the one thing they they tell us when you have a rental property is do not get a glass top stove. Um, right. <laughs> there are there are low heat burners that will not ignite oil, so it takes a little bit longer to cook stuff. But the tenant, if the tenant leaves the stove on and goes to sleep, like I've done before, um, you know, you're not going to get a fire. So, so yeah. that's that's important, and not everybody yeah. knows about those. There was a while ago I went to some trade show at one of the. CRA or Arla trade shows. And there was a fellow there who had a plug that you could put on the back of your stove and plug your stove into so that if your stove got up to a certain temperature over a certain amount of time, you just shut it down so that you couldn't have a fire and it would block it from going into the walls. Do you know anything about uh, nice. that? I can't remember what it's called now. I just kind of thought about it now. I, I know I personally, I, but. I've known I've, I know of plugs that you know if you're out if you're out and you forgot to turn something off it will just cut the power completely. But I've never heard of one that can actually tell how how how, how hot the it's temperature. And, yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah. We'd have to look into that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can cut the power. Is that something you can do from your phone, or is or how does that work? Oh yeah, <laughs> smart smart home. Now it's you can turn anything smart. You can get light bulbs that plug screw in. You can control with your phone. You can get things for yeah. your coffee maker. So you plug it into the wall first, then your coffee maker in it. It'll turn on your coffee maker. Man, you can you can even get shut offs. Like in my home, I have these sensors, and I keep them like you know by the washer down in the furnace room. And what it is, if, if it senses water, it gives me an alert. Hey, there's something going on. There's water here. And, it, you know, it makes you because yeah. a, lot, a lot of folks don't go into their furnace room very often. And you yeah. want to do that. Yeah. You want to go in there at least a few times a month, just, you know, once a week, checking it out, making sure there's nothing leaking, because that's where it's going to start. If something is leaking, most likely. Right. That's where the main shut off is everything. Right. Yeah. That's typically yeah. where the water heater is as well. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, how long do water heaters last in Alberta? <laughs> I would say uh, if you maintain them, I mean, you probably get 10, 15 years out of them. Yeah. yeah. How do you maintain a hot water heater though? Because that's something that I always think is good knowledge. So um, when well, you, you can get them flushed out. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Craig Kevin. Okay, yeah. So uh, when you get your furnace cleaned, um, yeah. which you should be doing every every year. Uh, you can also get your your tank flushed out. That will eliminate all the silt that builds up at the bottom, and um, it will extend the life of your uh, your water heater. There's also that little. There's a little piece in the water heater too. It, they call it an anode or something. I'm trying to remember, and it it, it disappears over time. Um, right, like uh, that, like a ten year. It's a, it's like a ten year life expectancy, really. But uh, your water heater can last you, you know, fifteen twenty years if yeah. if things are, you know maintained all the time and and, and and also a water softener will help to last a lot of your your like your your dishwasher your appliance. That's you know it'll extend yeah. the life of them so many more, so much more if you have a water softener. We have mm -hmm. very hard water here in Calgary. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna say, um, you know, when you uh, you you mentioned that you're a homeowner and then you rent your property out, 
it's uh, and then things start breaking down. So it goes back to you as the owner still maintaining all the appliances and and everything and getting regular cleanings. Like you have to maintain that because your tenant is not going to necessarily think of all that stuff. No, or they so, might so, not have the time. They might think I'm ranting because I don't have to do anything. I don't, yeah, exactly. So if you want to extend the life or uh, keep the life, then you have to uh, do regular maintenance, even if you're just uh, not living in the home, right? So that's uh, that's something that landlords should always remember that they should take care of uh, things, even if they're not the resident of that place anymore. So do you put your properties on a checklist schedule? Do you have them on your day timer or something so that you know when to change what, to change the filters? service the furnace, service the hot water tank. Is that what you do? Yeah, yeah I do that. It's more like seasonal for us, yeah. uh, for me. It's more seasonal. Like uh, when Halloween work runs comes around, I'll uh, I'll do the uh, smoke detectors and, you know, the heat. The heat, uh, all the heating, uh, get my heat vents cleaned, all that stuff when uh, when it's coming around fall and you're going to be using your, your – um, you're going to be using your furnace a lot more so uh, that's I, i'm usually like a seasonal guy but courtney might uh, do it differently well yeah for me for me i i just do a little in my calendar like that important one is changing that furnace filter every three months yeah. you know i just put it in my calendar it pops up saying hey change furnace filter usually i just it takes two seconds i go downstairs I, I buy extra i pull it out stick a new one in you'd be surprised what changing your furnace filter can do for for you for that yeah. yeah super important so what can it do what can it do it uh, can extend the life of your furnace definitely okay. it can yeah just by do, changing that filter a lot it will give you um better breeding because that those yeah, filters they do catch a lot of stuff right and if they're clogged up you want to get them out of there and get a new one in all the time your furnace is going to run a lot smoother you know, we've got a really old furnace in the house that we live in right now. And a while ago, we went, probably about two years ago, I went and got all these different furnace guys to come around and take a look at my furnace. And the last fellow who came said, you know, I wouldn't get a new furnace if I were you. He said, this is an old furnace. It runs really efficiently. It's still in really good shape. He said, you get a new furnace, what for? He said, until you have to replace it, I wouldn't. So I don't know. What do you think yeah. about it? Yeah, it's a huge expense as well, right? So if it's well maintained, and if it's not costing you a fortune to heat your home, and uh, yeah. why why change it when you don't have to? Right? Well, think, especially and if you if you do have a high efficiency, that's good. But if you don't, sometimes you got to look at because it'll cost more money for that older furnace to run, especially if it's not a high efficiency one, right? So sometimes you know, changing and if you could see on your bill a month time saving. 50 bucks or hundred dollars a month just because you change your furnace it might take a while but it will pay for itself right mm -hmm. over time yeah 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 i'm yeah. yeah. oh, sorry and what about the uh, life expectancy of washers and dryers how long do they usually last <laughs> it depends on much we haven't <laughs> that's <laughs> how much paint is that what you said <laughs> how much exactly yeah I, I, I say they're 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 probably about seven to twelve years uh, for for a washer, yeah, seven seven to ten. In, yeah, uh, in the case yeah. that she's got smart burners in her rental property. Oh, okay. And too, now so. we've got somebody commenting about saying they've got smart burners in their rental property and their and their house as well. So there's someone who's oh, awesome fire hazards. Which okay, is, that's excellent. Well, Darcy and Sly are going to be organized. They're going to they're going to do all that stuff right. <laughs> These yeah, are yeah. Really well, so they're <laughs> they're in his good books already. <laughs> yeah, you should find out the name you should find out the name of those uh smart burners so apparently like they're called the, smart burners uh, <laughs> yeah, I, gotta, I gotta look i gotta look at okay. smart burners yeah. Yeah, yeah what about flooring how long should flooring last depends on which one flooring, you're talking about yeah. Yeah. carpet yeah um lvp tile i mean yeah tile tile traffic, is the more right? <laughs> Tile is the most durable one there is because that thing can last you a long time if you take care of it. Uh, now, when it comes to carpet, depends if you have pets, if you wear your shoes on the carpet, yeah. um, lots of different factors, you know. Toys, yeah. dragon chairs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I would I would say LVP actually is a more durable product than tile because uh, even if you if you drop stuff on the tile, it could crack. Yes, true. Uh, like you know, uh, LVP is kind of bulletproof these days, uh, uh, and that's you know the the latest greatest trend in flooring. Yeah. Uh, really, um, uh, the glue down plank is actually more durable than the click plank because the click plank is a floating floor. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty durable and easy to clean and uh, supposed to be waterproof. But uh, I would say that the click, the click stuff. Uh, if you have a, if you have a pet or you know pets, kind of uh, take the life out of your, uh, out of everything. Uh, we love them to death, but uh, they're hard on your, your your floors and your furniture, and uh, they're really hard on. Like their hair get, kind of gets everywhere, even if you're diligent and clean after them constantly. You know, it, it, it does uh, affect it. So, yeah, I even found yeah. I had my furnace cleaned more often when people had pets. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then plus the yard, the the garden. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. One girl had two cats, and they kind of destroyed part of the the grass in the in the backyard. No, and then that... dogs. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> no, then I don't. Because I've always believed that if you got someone with pets, you've probably got someone who's responsible. They're going to be like most people would rather traumatize their kid by moving to a different school than traumatize their pet by, by moving to a different house. Um, and they're feeding their animals. They've, <laughs> generally speaking, they're, they've shown a, a level of, of respect and, and of um, dependability. Not always. Not always, but um, yeah, yeah. That's been that's been my experience. Yeah, not so much mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, uh, I, I also have pet allergies, so I don't really like having. I like dogs and cats, but I don't like having them in the house because it's so hard to get rid of the dander. Like I'm always sneezing yeah. and coughing, and it's yeah, really, yeah. It's hard on my respiratory tract. So, yeah. Anyway. I, Gil and I will never agree on that one. That's okay. But as, as, a, as a homeowner who's renting, you sort of got to factor those things in because definitely if you let someone in with a pet and they leave, the next person's going to have to live with the dander and all that stuff too, right? So um, yeah, absolutely. That's a, a thought you might want to have. Um, it gets a little dicey because you might have your lease say that a person's not allowed to bring a pet in. But they still might bring a pet in and they still might be able to, to force their way through the uh, RTDRS and actually get, get permission from the judge to have the pet. So it's, yeah. I've heard this happen, and um, especially if it's a service animal. But yeah. yeah. Well, you can't sure. deny a service animal, but yeah, that's, that's another kettle of fish with the RTA that I wasn't really going to get into today when talking about maintenance. So, yeah, but anyway, uh, let's talk about. I digressed. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> toilets and bathtubs. Bathrooms are always a real hot point for renters. So, yeah. how long should a toilet last? What can you do to maintain it? And yeah, and we always, I always think about little kids, parents who had a toddler. They're frequently flushing stuff down the toilet. <laughs> And oh, yeah. sometimes yeah. they would fess up and say, I did it. I'll pay for the plumber. And other times they'd be like, we don't know why our toilet won't flush. <laughs> the plumber would come, yeah, now that I found this squeegee toy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, in our case, a paintbrush. Paintbrush, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> toilets can last you a very long time because usually with toilets, everything in the inside can be changed out. Yes. So, I mean, yeah. and they're porcelain. They, they can last very long, you know? Because yeah. usually if something yeah. is broken, they're really easy. There's, there's so many parts out there for them that you can just change out the inside. So I would say toilets, you know, you can get 20 plus year out of a toilet. Let, yeah. Let's say sta standard toilets. Because <laughs> Let's say standard toilets because we run into some really fancy toilets where yeah, you're like, what? is that exactly inside there like you have to order the uh, the parts from spain or something it's ridiculous oh, wow. but <laughs> but yeah i mean you're, you're, you're we're talking about your average standard toilet and then it, you know it could last you as long as you know as long as the life of the home really like we've run into places where it hasn't 
they've never changed the toilets. So, oh, wow. yeah. yeah, yeah. Showers, because uh, one one tip I know is don't buy the cheap stuff because you can't. Yeah. Hard to put in, hard to fix, and then you can't replace it. Like yeah. I learned my lesson. I I only buy the the really good quality shower hardware. But are yeah. you replacing shower hardware fairly frequently? How long should that last if you've got a good good shower? bathtub again hardware. again like if you have the uh if you have like a water softener or, or something like that your your shower head could last you uh you know forever really oh. and uh uh like you know 15 20 years really um but they're yeah. they're really an inexpensive to change uh a shower most head you know yeah so yeah, most times like most times with, with shower stuff like that that thing that they put in behind the wall that stays there for it for a long time unless you're doing a a renovation where you want to put a new shower in that will last a lifetime um most times with showers if, if they start to leak it's just usually a cartridge and there's a lot of cartridge you know they got some big makers out there you can go to home depots and stuff and pick up cartridge just to change them all quickly so sometimes when you have problems it's not really the hardware it's just it's things that you can change out in them right yeah, and quite often they have lifetime warranties yeah, yes, I've, that's had, right. I've, called, I've taken pictures of hardware before and sent it to the company, and then they couriered me the parts. Yeah, with the yeah, yeah. I was astounded. Yeah. Del Delta, Moen, they all have uh, all the lifetime all the warranty. Brands yeah, have uh, lifetime warranty. So. I was so amazed. Yeah. I wrote them this really long, nice email, and I said, "Where can I get parts?" <laughs> and they're like, "Nah, <laughs> you know this stuff yeah. every day. No big deal." Um, yeah. faucets, the taps used to be a big one for landlords. They couldn't understand why you'd have to go in and fix taps. What can go wrong on taps? How long should they last? Faucets. Um, it, it depends how long, how, how many uh, moving parts they have. Cause the, uh, <laughs> you have that, the, the pull out hose and, um, you know, uh, the sprayer it's, it's different, uh, and you're, it all depends on your tenant how how rough they are with the yeah. stuff too, right? So yeah, most times what breaks them down though is it it's it's the hard water. Like honestly, okay. that you know, a water softener will take you a long way. It'll be so much easier on your on your stuff like your taps, your showers, because if you have hard water, usually you know five six years Lime, that thing is clogged up. Calcium, yeah. calcium, right? Yeah. Um, a lot. A lot of the, 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 the taps, they do have cartridges too inside them. Um, but most time too is trying to track down the part because usually you have little rubbers in them, little um, gaskets that may have worn out over time and it's trying to find them, right? Yeah. 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 So if you can find them, great. Then it'll last you quite a long time if you can't. Yeah, you can you're, getting, you're getting a new one. Yeah. <laughs> so when you buy the original tap, you should find out what parts they are made for them then and have a supply <laughs> somewhere so that whenever it happens, you'll be prepared. That would be a very, <laughs> I don't think most people can jump far ahead with that much detail, but it's a great idea. To, to be honest, idea, no, but if, so. if, if you are like this day and age we live in, it actually costs more to service things and actually to go get a new one. Yeah. No, honestly, it's it, it like sometimes it's not worth it by the time you get somebody in to fix it. You're looking at a couple hundred dollars and then they're just fixing it. So now you're not sure is that fixed in a hole? You know, you, you could pick up yeah. a new tap for like less than a hundred bucks, right? Takes a few minutes to put in and away you go again, right? For a few years, right? That so. kind of reminds me of a condo we used to manage and the uh, the faucet said the kitchen and the bathroom kept going. There was always something part that was going, the washers, this, that, the other thing. Yeah. And we kept saying to the owner, why don't you just replace them? You know, for yeah. a couple hundred bucks, we're not sending people in every few months. Yeah, and he yeah. didn't want to do it. He, he was like, yeah, you want to spend the money? And, you know, so he said, well, it's your call. You're I mean, spending the money anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> you need it out slowly or you could just pay a little chunk all at once, get it over and done with. Um, yeah. It, if anything, I've learned in this um, couple of years that we've been running this business is yeah just sometimes you just gotta replace it it's, it's not even worth fixing right so in the long run it's just gonna be less expensive to just replace it what about uh air conditioners how long should they last if you guys see 
we don't really um, deal with uh, maintenance of ACs, but uh, you know they, they should again get serviced every year. Um, as long as you're servicing it regularly, um, then the, the, your your appliances should last you you know quite yeah. a few years. I mean, I have a, I have an AC at home, so I can speak to it. Um, yeah, you do have to get them serviced. Um, most most AC too, they have covers. So, you know, especially in the wintertime, you want to get them covered up, you know, turned off, covered up. So, you know, things are not getting inside them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the servicing is important. At least at least once every two years, you need somebody to come out. They'll blow them out. They'll make sure everything is good with them. So you do want to just regular maintenance will extend the life of them. OK, all good. Um, siding. How long does siding last? Kind of house. <laughs> Um, you live in Alberta, so <laughs> yeah. the next hailstorm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the next hailstorm. Like, you know we, where you we live. Do, <laughs> we do get a lot of calls for sightings. Um, there's always, you know, a piece blowing off here and there, and then we got to try and take it somewhere to get it color match because it's faded. So. You know, we, we go through a lot where, you know, a piece is blown off. It's nowhere to be found. You try to find yeah. the color. You can because they have a number name on it. But because the sun has beaten on that side in for so many years and you get the, the right color, it's not the same color anymore. Yeah. So there was, you get your. There was that garage where the guy had the barbecue. Oh, yeah. And so. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I always wonder if siding is actually a good idea or if it's a better idea to just get smooth stucco or some other alternative instead. I mean, Hardy plank, I'm not sure if they still make that, but yeah. um, what are your thoughts? Oh, yeah, on they're making side siding is one of the the, the cheaper um, things to put on the outside of your home. I mean, once you start going into stucco and, and hardy board, you know, you're getting up there in price, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I went yeah. with uh, siding in my uh, in the house that I built in, in Victoria. Um, just because I, um, because it was cheaper, <laughs> just seemed like a better, better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your hardy plank and um and your stuck core are gonna be your uh, you know your more durable options, but uh, they they can cost a pretty penny to, I would to actually, repair. And yeah, yeah, and, and and styles change too. Like in our house, we've had the siding on since 1972, and it looks right. tired and it looks. <laughs> Well, they, they must have had a sale on urine yellow side. Because <laughs> oh, urine yellow color. Oh and my goodness. No right mind would have ever chosen this color for the <laughs> house. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. You find my house, it's the urine yellow, third one to the left. Oh there. my goodness. <laughs> Not my favorite color, obviously. Um, yeah. What about how long should a roof last? If it's, well, I guess this isn't really your area of expertise, though. Um, but Gil actually did a, a little blurb on this before. Yeah, so slate's going to give you 50 years. Concrete mm -hmm. could give you 50 years. Clay can give you 50 years. Wood shakes, 30 years. And fiber, cement, shingles, 25 years. And asphalt, shingles, 20 years. So okay. I think how long. Did we do our roof? We did. I've had roof two roofs replaced in the last five years. And they were both on for about, they were the, the cheap ones, the asphalt singles, shingles. They last quite, quite a long time. Um, but after I got them replaced, there were leaks. So they, I had to get people to come back up and service them. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. I remember standing in the bathroom and getting a drip on my head and thinking, where's that coming from? There's no fan there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dishwashers. Do you have any tips for uh, cleaning the gunk out of your dishwasher so that it stays in better shape longer? I heard that yeah, Tang the thing to use, I, and I tried it. I put Tang in my dishwasher to clean it out. It had a really nice orangey smell. I liked it. But, tang. Yeah, Tang. Okay. Same stuff you drink. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone um, ever drink no. that anymore? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> um. Yeah, just uh, you should you should definitely run a cycle every every like month or so, like run a, a cleaning cycle in in your dishwasher uh, just to, and, and then uh, it should have um, like your your uh, your jet dry where you put your jet dry. You should clean that out as well. But yeah. um, 
yeah as long as you're uh doing like your regular maintenance on it again it's, it seems like a broken record but <laughs> um regular maintenance goes a long long way for uh saving your appliances or extending the life of them so yeah so we have we have a tenant who it, has a dishwasher but he doesn't like to use it he likes to wash his dishes by hand so i told him yeah. can you can you just wash run your dishwasher once a month is that You're right yeah yeah. It's a good uh, idea. You yeah, want you want to run yeah. that thing once a month. You don't want to leave it for months and months and not not use it at all, right? Yeah. At least once a month. Just just run one cycle through it. That's keep minimal. It, yeah. Like a car, keep keep your car running. Um, yeah. Okay. And refrigerators. What should we do to maintain a refrigerator? To well, maintain? you definitely want to. Um, so all these appliances. So your your refrigerator, your stove, especially your refrigerator. You want you want to pull that away out and you want to make yeah. sure that you know you want to dust from behind especially that where that motor is because a lot of stuff especially if you have pets oh man you'll be surprised the amount of uh, fur balls and stuff you could find back there and, yeah. and that will yeah. make your make your make your refrigerator go a long way you know always practice maybe once a month pulling them out and you know vacuuming behind them right pushing them back in right so the coils yeah. for our refrigerator are underneath of it which really is hard to get. I can get in there with yeah. my little vacuum cleaner, not special nozzle, but I can only go so far. So, yeah, it's not the best design. It's like, oh, most... why don't they put the plugins at the front? Why do they have to put them in the back? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why you can access them. The one thing we haven't yeah. is we haven't hooked up the water to our dishwasher or to our fridge. Uh, we did hook up the water to our dishwasher, um, but to the fridge because I've seen so many horror stories where that line breaks. And mm -hmm. they're in forest floods, so um, we just don't want to take that chance. I get well, a professional to do it. Yeah, we should well, just get a professional, like a plumber well, or something. And 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 you should, you know, when we go back to like even say, you know, you have uh, we do a lot of maintenance too in condos, and you know sometimes you imagine what like a, a bad uh, washer hose can cause, especially if you live on the fourth floor. Yeah. yeah. That damage uh, yeah. goes down to three suites below you, and it's it's and very possible for it. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that one thing will so, cost millions of dollars of damage. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my About dad. Thousands for sure. And they they had a leak, I think, with the sprinkler system on the top floor. He's on the oh. top floor, and he said, "How much damage do you think it cost?" And this was before I bought a house or anything. So this was like years and years ago. I said, "Oh, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand. He said. 2.2 million. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> That's and a, then it flooded yeah. again about a year ago. So. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. And yeah. then they also have a problem with woodpeckers kind of getting underneath the, the east. <laughs> pecking little holes in. And then they got. Courtney. Do you have a, do you have a woodpecker? Wood You've got actually a very good woodpecker story, but I'd love to hear yours. Well, <laughs> we got many, many woodpecker story. I mean, it's, especially when, when you. You know, that's, that's one thing I've never seen. The what with sightings, woodpecker don't they don't bug sightings. When you start getting your hardy board and all other stuff, any kind of wood, they like will cedar, make cedar siding. Cedar, yeah. cedar siding. Cedar siding. They, they love that stuff. Yeah. I don't understand. Um, so it, stand on our light standard and peck at the metal. Like uh, you just hear this <laughs> sound. <in there. laughs> There's no bugs yeah. on there, I'm sure. No. <laughs> And that's what they're going for is the bugs um, in the cedar siding there. Um, and we, our, our woodpecker story is uh, we had a call from a certain condo, uh, a property management company, and we went to go fix uh, one woodpecker hole. And then we fixed the hole and uh, they called us back probably three or four times because each time we patched the hole, the woodpecker would make a new hole right beside the one that we just patched. So yeah. it was like uh <laughs> they it was like they, a series of patches. Yeah. Yeah. They eventually got pest control in there. I had to put up something more permanent to actually keep the woodpecker away. Because yeah, he just kept they just kept making holes. But then you right have beside the ones that we patched. Yeah. You, just, yeah. you have to call fish and wildlife because it's a yeah. protected species. Yeah. yeah, that's what they ended up calling. Yeah, fish yeah. and wildlife. But I think they they didn't do anything to them. I think they they got some um some netting. I believe there's certain things that they can get just to keep them away from. Okay. You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah. They're very persistent, though. That's what I find with woodpeckers. We, Gail, yeah. you should follow yeah. up your story. This one was a. We had this condo that was kind of difficult to rent because there was a crazy woman who lived underneath of the condo. So the <laughs> tenants, the owners, moved to Vancouver and they were really nervous about selling the property because they knew that whoever bought it would have the crazy woman underneath who's always banging on the with a broomstick on the ceiling because heaven forbid if they talked or walked on, <laughs> you know, she'd be slipping notes under the door, complaining to the board. So she really made their lives miserable. So they said, well, maybe when we get tenants and it won't be so bad, but it was. So the tenants ended up, they signed a three-year lease, but they ended up moving out after a year because they couldn't stand the woman underneath. So uh, then when we had our property management business, we ended up renting it to this um, fellow who was a police officer and he was not the kind of person who would take any guff. <laughs> Nice. And he also worked nights. So he slept during the day. So I think it worked out really quite well. And he never got bothered by the woman. But then he started calling the owner and calling us. And this is where Gil can take over the story. So a wood, this is a very persistent woodpecker. And it actually pounded a hole through the siding and then through the drywall. Oh. Wow. So there was a little hole you could see outside from from one of the bedrooms so he relocated oh, wow. to a different bedroom um but he was unable to sleep during the day because um the woodpecker was just always there oh, so wow. he actually got um a, a permit to dispose of the woodpecker but before they got rid of the woodpecker the property management company changed so they had to go through the whole Start process again and oh my god <laughs> really want them to kill the woodpecker but in the end, that's what happened. I mean, uh, it was so now we had this nice little hole in the wall that we got to patch. But it wasn't oh, something we no. thought we'd ever have. We've dealt with crazy tenants, crazy property owners, crazy neighbors, <laughs> but not a crazy woodpecker. But <laughs> I was starting to move out because of the birds. If I can't sleep, he's always pecking on my wall. And I, I felt very bad. That's how I felt when I had pigeons. Pigeons, man. Oh. Yeah. It just comes early in the morning and wake you up. <laughs> there's so many of them and they're so loud. Yeah, yeah I don't no. find it soothing. I find it sort of annoying. We have a uh, lady with um, with uh, solar panels and um, she lifted them off last year and there was just an absolute zoo of pigeons and um, they, wow. they got rid of the nests and the pigeons were flying around confused for days trying to figure out what, what was going on. It was almost funny in a tragic sort of way. Wow. Oh, Dirty yeah. animals, too. Yeah, they leave a big mess. Oh. As squirrels, she also had squirrels' nests underneath it for solar panels. So wow. that kind of surprised me because I thought squirrels would get into the attic, but I didn't think they'd get into the solar or under the solar panels. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so she got some put up. But I was going to ask you, what's your weirdest maintenance story, your most unusual maintenance story that you'd like to tell us? Uh, or humorous? I, I don't think there's anything too weird. I mean, we've been asked to go and uh, flush a toilet before. Like, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, there's <laughs> a, a, a condo unit where I. No, it was like a, a townhouse unit, I believe. And um, uh, it's just like a, a toilet in common area. In, in a common area and nobody uses it. And it was starting to smell and the, the tenants upstairs could smell it. So they called us and asked exactly. us to go flush, go flush the toilet. Well, <laughs> keep charging. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. hundred um, bucks to go flush a toilet, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot. We have we we get a lot of pests, you know, like especially um, birds um, in dryer vents and stuff like that. Oh, that the we squirrel, have to yeah, get out. yeah, the squirrels, yeah, <laughs> a dead squirrel in a dryer vent. That I forgot yeah. about that one, but yeah, there yeah. was. Uh, we, we I had the pleasure of oh. um, scraping that Ooh. thing out. <laughs> I guess you can't really be squeamish on this kind of job, can you? Can't have a week. No. <laughs> We had those mice in, oh. in uh, Fullerton. Oh, yeah. We, they we were mummified. Mummified mice oh. in the fire vents? Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. And uh, we've also had like mouse infestations fairly frequently in condo buildings. And bed bugs. Yeah. Bed bugs. Yeah. Have you ever had to uh, yeah. mice and bed bugs? No. no not, 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 not bed bugs. Not as handy, um, man. Yeah. In our, <laughs> in our previous lives, uh, I've had to deal with bed bugs, like as far as uh, you show up to uh, show up to a service call and they're like, well, they just sprayed for bed bugs. Come on in. And like, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, oh, no, I don't think so. I think we'll, we'll reschedule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, so. Gil had a time he rented a, an apartment to this one lady and we used to drop off gift baskets and we didn't have one with us at the time. So we said, well, we'll come back and we'll drop it off. So Gil knocked on the door, he gave her the gift basket and he said, oh, and you know, how are things? So we really like the apartment. We love the area. But by the way, what do we do with the bed bugs? I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I freaked out, of course. I'm like, ah, oh, no, change outside. But you think for the clothes in the dryer? Yeah. But the owner really freaked out. He was not happy. No, he it. wasn't very happy because uh, the owner has to pay the cost of that. Yeah, right. a lot of people don't know that. But um, what's funny is that we had that most infestation in in one of our properties, and it was managed by a condo management company. The mice got in through a receptacle that was loose on the outside of the building. And the condo company is supposed to be responsible for maintaining the envelope of the building. Mm -hmm. So we thought yeah. they should pay for the mouse infestation because they had dropped the ball, but they absolutely refused to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. No. so we took care of it and then, they, then the mice came back again. So so the tenants left. Yeah, we thought we'd, uh, we, I brought a guy in to take a look at where the mouse hole was, where he thought it was, and he patched everything up and fixed it. And then we got a cleaning crew in to clean everything because she was just freaking out. You know, she was an immaculately yeah. clean person and that having mice in her house was just beyond horrible for her. Um, and then when the yeah. mice came back the second time around, that's when they moved. And I, I don't know, because there again, sometimes they could come in through under, if, if you're on the main floor, they can come in from outside. They can come in from the parking, yeah. any number yeah. of places rodents can get in. Yeah, and bed bugs, you don't know. But that isn't part of your maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No. It's not. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll leave it to the pest control guys. <laughs> yes, they can. They can handle that job. That would not be a job I would want to do at all, ever. No, thank you. Nope. I hope I never see bed bugs again. So, if you're giving people one word of advice about managing the maintenance for their rental property, what would that be? Um, this, this keep your, your schedule, like your, uh, quarterly schedule. Um, just make sure you're, uh, communicating with your tenants, ask them because sometimes things will break and they will, the, the tenant won't mention it. And then, you know, a uh, hundred, a hundred dollar fix could turn into thousands of dollars fix yeah. because they neglected to tell you what's going on. Right. That's, yeah. that's why we recommend doing quarterly inspect inspections where you actually go and check in with the tenant and see, because sometimes they'll think of it if they see you, but they won't think of it if they don't see you. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Courtney, do you have anything to add to? Um, I mean, you know, um, ensure that your tenants do carry tenants insurance, you know. Oh, because, that's, oh yeah, you know, that, that's tenants, huge. Tenants yeah. can damage your property real easy. And, you know, they're always on the hook for it. You know, a lot of tenants don't know that they are. I mean, we as... As landlords, you have insurance, and if something is wrong, you're going to put it to your insurance. But that insurance company is always going to look to recoup it somewhere, mm -hmm. and they're going to come after who did the damage. So you know, for for you know, twenty five, thirty bucks a month, you can have tenants insurance, and you know, yes. have a piece. That of also mind. that also covers you if there's a flood or something, you need to go to a hotel. Yeah. We yeah, used yeah. to actually um, buy the insurance ourselves and add it to the tenants' bill. There yeah. was a company that we could yeah. do that with. And, and they could the tenants could choose which package they wanted. So yeah. you know, the minimal coverage or maximum coverage or what was the company? Do you remember? I can't remember what they're called anymore. Um, we should find yeah, it. but they usually have a minimum number of properties that you have to have in order for them to give you the umbrella insurance. Okay. But yeah, it was great because then we always knew that because we we were the ones who whose name was on it, and then it was uh, the policy was under the tenant's name. But we knew because we paid it every month and they reimbursed us that they always had tenants insurance. Because we've been told that something like 60% of people will cancel their, their insurance. Like they require insurance to get the lease. Once they That's get the right. lease, they'll cancel the insurance, yeah. even though it's only 30 bucks a month. Yeah. Or less. 
you, you can know, get insurance more or less yeah. yeah it's very cheap so the insurance is a really good good i i'm really glad you brought that yes. up Courtney. and i really yeah. like the uh quarterly or the um seasonal maintenance checks and, and we're putting them in your calendar i think those are both excellent advice to give uh landlords property owners property investors so thank you yeah. two very much. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, Courtney, for joining us and sharing your wisdom. Thanks for having us. Yes. And, yes. Uh, Thanks for having the, us. The powers behind 403 Handyman, who are an thank excellent you. service. Yeah. And thank you, uh, thank you very much, and have a wonderful evening. You too, guys. Too. 403 you. Handyman Bye. is an Airdrie, right? We should be clear on that. Are you an Airdrie? Yes, we're well, based we're, out of Airdrie, but we service Calgary and surrounding areas. Right. Okay. Yeah. But I think there's also other 403 handymans, right? Yeah, it's a yes, franchise. it's a franchise. Yeah, so there's 403 in Red Deer, it's 403 Medicine, Medicine Hat. Hat, there's 403 um, Left Bridge, Left Bridge, is Left Bridge? And uh, Okotoks. To Okotoks be, will yeah. actually just soon to be starting a 403 there. But we do, Okotoks we do High uh, River, have right? Okotoks and High River. But we have um, Airdrie and Calgary. Oh, okay, that's great. Calgary. Yeah, that's good. Great. So, good to know. Thank you very much. Have yourself a wonderful evening. Thanks, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.